And to all of you, I want to say the same thing, for taking your time to come and join us here, to be part of catalyzing the movement around racial equity in Alaska. There is no better time. There is no such thing as the wrong time to do the right thing. It's always the right time, right? So on behalf of First Alaskans Institute, I really want to welcome each and every single one of you to say thank you to each of you, to ask you to take our appreciation to your families for letting you be here, to your organizations for supporting you in participating. We cannot wait to see what will happen over the next two days and the work that we will get to do together. My name is Liz Medicine Crow. I am Clinkett and Haida from Kihkwan, Cake, Alaska in Southeast. On my Clinkett side, I'm Raven Kachadi, freshwater mark sockeye salmon. And on my Haida side, I'm Eagle Chichkit Ne, and our crest is the hummingbird. My family comes from Haida Gwaii in British Columbia. Um, I would like to pay my respects to some of my own elders who are in the room from Kihkwan. My mother, Della Chini, and I see Edna Charlie has also joined us. Goodness Chish, how for coming. Um, I didn't see any of the other precious faces from Keith Kwan here yet, but uh, just wanted to pay respects to my elders. And I also want to pay respects to all of the elders who have been uh, working so hard in this area, living this life here in Alaska. Your guidance is desperately needed, your wisdom honored, and we thank you for coming and being part of this as well. We have a lot of work that we will do together. I heard last night that there was a phenomenal reception and I was so bummed to miss it. But I heard it was incredible. Our uh, flight coming into Juneau was hit by lightning. Luckily we weren't on it, we weren't on it. <laughs> it was hit by lightning and um, it delayed uh, everybody coming up from Southeast who were planning on being at the reception. And so we kind of had our own fun time in Juneau because the sun came out. It was beautiful in Southeast. And I know that our First Alaskans team put on a stellar event. Uh, from everything that I heard, it sounded incredible. And I know that they sp uh, spent some time talking to you about the way we will be working with one another over the course of this time. And I think what's really key that I wanted to um, spend a little time focusing on as we get uh, warmed up and into our program this morning is to talk a little bit about what we mean by partnership for the next 10,000 years. Partnership for the next 10,000 years. At First Alaskans Institute, our vision is progress for the next 10,000 years. But we know that moving forward as it always has been for our people here in Alaska, it comes with relationship. It comes with kinship. It comes with the ability to be next to each other, both as family members and as good neighbors, stewarding this place. And this place not only requires our good attention, it requires our good attention to one another in order to get there. So we are working towards and building off of a foundation of some incredible depth thousands of years of history for Alaska Native people and the indigenous peoples of this place and building off of the effort, the struggle, the heartache, the heartbreak, the laughter, and the other relationships that our elders, our ancestors and our elders put into place so that we could be here today, so that we could roll up our sleeves together and talk about how we are going to help make Alaska a better place for the long term. And the way that we are able to do that at First Alaskans Institute is because we have an incredibly visionary board who constructed an organization that allows us to tackle the issues that are looking way over the horizon. And I cannot thank them enough. It's such a privilege and an honor to be able to be part of the organization and to work with the people that I get to work with every day. And I wanna acknowledge our board chair, Willie Hensley, who's down here, uh, down here in front. If you 
can wave at everybody. <laughs> and if you haven't had a chance to meet him, I hope you have a chance to meet him while he's here with us today. I'm going to cheese Willie. I also want to say, and I would like for you to join me in thanking the team of First Alaskans Institute. Can I have all the staff that's in the room please stand? I know, we have, I know we have some other folks out in the front helping to register, but they just pour their heart and soul into this work. They know that this work is about love, and it's about caring for who we are and moving all of us forward, not at the expense of anyone else, but together. And we are so happy that each of you are here in that partnership, ready to roll up your sleeves, ready to get to work, and I want to also um, welcome our national visitors and our international visitors. We have some family from New Zealand who traveled up to be with us. Chishawa, thank you for coming. And um, I just can't believe that we have the ability to spend this time together. And we're going to have a little bit more time kind of talking about what we're going to be doing and all these issues that we're involved with. So I just want to make sure that um, if anything comes up, if you have any questions that arise, the other thing that I want to make sure that you know is that First Alaskans Institute's team is here to help. We are hosts to this convening, this summit. We're also participants to it. We say that we're hosts because as hosts, if you come to my village and you're my guest in my village and I'm your host, it's my responsibility to take care of you. And as my guest, it's your responsibility to take care of me. And so that's what we're gonna ask each of you to be part of here is to take care of yourself and take care of each other. And if we can be of any service at all, please grab any of our staff and we'll be able to uh, address whatever the concern is, okay? Does that sound good? So this morning, we wanted to start off our time with some guidance from our elders. We wanted to start off our time with some of their perspective and their words. In our native culture, our elders are held up and revered, and we listen to their wisdom. One of my, one of my elders, one of my mentors, uh, her name is Marianne Warden from Koktovic, and I asked her, what is it that she wants, as an elder, what is it that she wants from us? And she said, elders, we, you know, we'll set our vision, we know what it is we, we want to see happen, but you young people, you carry it. You are our arms and our legs. And that is what we're trying to do through our work, is to be the arms and the legs of this vision of racial equity in Alaska for the next 10,000 years. So please let me welcome our first elder speaker this morning, Mr. Fred John. Fred John is an elder um, his family is from Mantasta area in the Atna region. Um, he's also the son of Katie John. He's been leading a walk for the last two years now. Walk for Shukte. Did I say it right, Fred? Shukte? Shukte? Shukte. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. I got no speech prepared. I just want to. I just want to talk a little bit about growing up in uh, Alaska. I, uh, I was born back in 1943, and I went to boarding school from 1950 to 1957. And when I was a little kid, I went to a movie in Fairbanks, my first movie called it was Tarzan. <laughs> and then when I got home, I talk about it, trying to explain to other village kids about a, a two-tailed animal 
let a man, uh, naked man ride around, you know. <laughs> but when I was in Fairbanks, I didn't know them days. I was pretty young, really young. I was about 48, 49. There was a certain place for Native people to sit in a uh, theater. My mom, my, uh, my mom and I, we went down there, they directed us where to sit. And we said, I didn't know. I could see my mother was a little bit angry, but I, I didn't know why. I think that was my first encounter with, uh, you know, separation of race and people. The second time, this was back in 1950, down in Copper Center, there was a Cup 96. I, uh, it's a bar. And on the sign, I didn't read it, but later on when I, was, I, I went to Wrangell and learned how to read a little bit, my brother told me it was uh, no Indians or dog allowed on there. I remember my uncle, Stephen John, trying to go in there, and uh, we were wandering around outside, and the bartender came out and told him, you can't come in here, you can't come in here. <laughs> my uncle is a big guy. Bartender was a little tiny man, <laughs> told uh, he told the bartender, I'm a white man. <laughs> Who are you? I'm just like a white man like you. He said, no, you're not. You can't come in here. And he, uh, he was, uh, my uncle looked really threatening, I guess. So he, he just kept arguing with him. Finally, that guy <laughs> let him in have a drink. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> those, were, uh, those were my young days. We, uh, I went to Wrangell. 1952, 1950, I started, I came back 52 the first time, two years. I was about seven years old, my sister was five. If anybody, I, I talk about, I don't talk, about, I'm a Christian. I always hear persecution of Christian in uh, America. I don't think us Christians get persecuted if we get in trouble, it was our own fault. But I never, I never saw a uh, Christian being persecuted. I seen Native American like me, and I was being, being hit because of who I am, a brown man. I lived through them hard time, them uh, time back in the 50s and the early 40s. The good thing about it is I walk out of it. I came out from that area, a real uh, area where, where there was a separation of native people, you know, from non-native, through boarding school, through relocation. My, some of my aunties, they were uh, half white people and half Indian. I remember they, would take, they took them away and, and we never saw them again. As, as we went to Wrangell, sometime two years, I, when I was in Wrangell, I see some of them kids down there for 12 years. They couldn't, they couldn't go home. They ended up got no place to go. As we, got, we were privileged to come back after two years every year, but we lost our language. We lost who we are. We lost how to make craft, how to make a uh, sled, snowshoe, all those things our father teach. The girls, they, lear they forgot, they didn't learn how to be uh, mothers. They didn't learn how to sew. They didn't learn how to go trap or go fishing like the men do. We lost all those things just because of separation of race. It took me 40 years, about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, before I finally came out of my own prison. I built a wall around me, and I stayed in there, it was safe, and I started drinking. You know, I don't blame I don't blame anybody for my drinking. I, I blame myself. I took the bottle. I drank it on my own. It's not, I don't blame, but 
but I think to hide my feelings, to hide my hate, to hide my uh, all those feelings and all those emotions I had, I do a lot of drink, and then when I get drunk, man, do I get <laughs> all the uh, all the emotions come out, and I got in trouble. I get in trouble a lot of time. It took me years to come back. My family loved me. My family and my tribe in Mentasta keep wanting me to come back, you know. And they know where I was, me and my sisters and everything. I got two sisters that died of alcoholism, younger than I am. I got two older brothers that were in Wrangell with me. They're, they're, they haven't come out of that area yet. They're still in their own little prison. I thank the Lord, I thank my people, I thank my family. I walk out of there. I believe myself to be a healthy, healthy person. Walking out of that area of uh, prejudice, discrimination. And uh, I believe, uh, I really don't know. I got one buddy here that's been in Wrangell with me. We never, we never see each other for 60 years. It's Hensley's bro uh, younger brother. I was glad to see him the last time I went meeting. And he's walking tall right now. He's walking good. There's so many of us that came out of that area that never made it. Throughout Alaska, Fort Yukon, different place, people committed suicide from that area. People died of alcoholism. People died in isolation. And there's a lot of us that walked out. We, we work ourselves. We know where we've been. Uh, we know, uh, we kind of learned. I went to, uh, oh, I went to that, what you call that, uh, Tanana Chief uh, Mental Recovery Center. That's where I really learned about my stuff. That's where I really start walking out better than before. I just want to say, I see a little, uh, you know, this, uh, ra we talk about races. It's right now, it's really discreet. You can't hardly see it. For some reason, I think I lived through it. I could feel it if there's something going on. I could feel it. Certain place, I could feel it where I go. I don't know if it's me or the Lord, you know, showed me something like that. I don't, I don't know, but I know if there is some racist there. I just want to say, uh, I hope we have a good week. I hope we got, uh, we learn from each other. I hope we know how to uh, be there for each other. Just like last Saturday, say justice for all. And I believe that for everybody, natives, non-native, us people that went through it, we don't want it on anybody else. It's not right, it's not good, it never was right. And I believe that uh, as native people here in Alaska, we could learn together to walk together. We, we, we have our difference, we're brown, there's white, there's black, we, there's different, you know, different religion. We, that's good. We, that's uh, a good mixture. That's uh, I think we uh, we could all get along. We could uh, live together. And I thank God for my experience, because I came through it. I survived. Thank you. You were so good, Finnish Cheesh. My, uh, <clears throat> my hair standing on end, chicken skin, right? Um, thinking about what he just said and about what our charge is as we move forward in time. I'd like to also welcome another elder, Karen Hunt, up to the stage. Karen is... Uh, one of our visionary council members for the Advancing Native Dialogues on Racial Equity Project. And she's graciously agreed to share just a few words of welcome and vision to set us on fire. Come on up, Karen. Thank you. 
and thank you. I, it may be uh, a little strange to see me up here, but let me tell you that I was not born here. I came to Alaska in 1973. I came from Southern California. And what I had been doing in Southern California was teaching in the what we at then called the Watts area of Los Angeles, which is where uh, African Americans live and are educated. And I had asked for that assignment. I was dismayed and angry and sad and almost unbelieving. So then, because of my husband coming here, we relocated and I came to Alaska. And I was shocked. I knew nothing about, not really much about Alaska, and almost nothing about the indigenous people of Alaska. And I could not believe what I saw in terms of the racism. I could not believe what I then began to study and understand as an incredible history of abuse. And I, you know it far better than I do. I just couldn't believe it, which shows you perhaps I was innocent, but mostly I think I was just dumb. So I have tried over the years to do what I could do, but I knew coming from my experience in California that what I needed to do was talk to other people that looked like me, that talked like me, and thought like me. Because it's white people to white people who need to have these conversations and to call them out and to identify the racism that is there. So when I was asked to become a part of the visionary circus of this a circle of this project, <laughs> sorry about that. It feels like a circus sometimes, okay. But it is really a, it's a wonderful, wonderful project. And so I'm a little shy, I, shy is not a word usually applied to me, but I'm a little hesitant today to suggest to you what I think our charge is. But I'll tell you what I think it is, okay? I think it is the responsibility of every one of us in this room, me, you, and everybody sitting next to you, to share the experiences, the knowledge, the insight, to share the ideas and the goals, and figure out what can we do, who can do it, how can it be done. Because our primary responsibility is to make sure that your children and my grandchildren live in an Alaska where this conference is absolutely history and is unnecessary because we've achieved the goal of racial equity among all peoples in Alaska, starting with those of us in this room. Let's have a terrific day remembering it is our responsibility to make sure that our children and grandchildren can live in the world that we envision is the good and right world for all of us. Thank you. Ganesh Cheesh, Karen, so much. We have appreciated her advice and her guidance on our visionary council. We have also super appreciated her fire. Um, she's been there through the first phase and the second phase of our project, which you'll hear a little bit more about um, in a bit. But we've continued to really appreciate what she shared with us and her insights about the different kinds of uh, challenges that we have before us in the systems. So goodness, Chish Karen, thank you so much. Our next elder I'd like to invite up, I'll try not to cry as I invite her up, <laughs> is my own mother. This is Della Chini uh, Katsawa. Uh, she has been involved with so many of our activities 
um, and giving us guidance and giving us wisdom. And, but mostly, um, just so you guys know, my staff overrules me every single time <laughs> when it comes to my mom. Um, they just love her and they love the guidance that she gives them and also the love that she gives them. And I can't thank her enough for that. So please welcome my mother, Della Cini. Hawa, Gunas Chish. Stathkawa is my Stathkawa is my Haida name. Katsawa is my Klinkit name. And I was thinking about where to begin. Um, I went to do some research as a community fellow in 1990 to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. And I didn't know what to expect. It was a big challenge. And sitting with people from 50 states there was one representative from each state. I was the one from Alaska. So I went in to listen to Noam Chomsky speak one day. He's a sociologist from the 50s, 60s, and a big writer about life in our United States. I thought I'd see this six foot tall man with muscles and a strong person. Here he was a small, strong person. <laughs> <laughs> and I was listening to him. He spotted me as soon as I walked in the room and knew I was from Alaska. But beyond that, I just sat back and listened. And he said, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing that we are amazed when somebody in Africa or in France does the same thing we do. Isn't it amazing? And I thought, yeah. <laughs> he said, well, he had a lot more to say about it, but short story. We have the same tools. Oh, isn't it amazing that we find that we are human beings? And I am amazed because we learn from the very first to sort ourselves out. I'm a female or a male. I'm a baby, a young child, a teenager, adult. And we sort ourselves out by how rich we are, <laughs> what we have, what we don't have. 
So we do this for my life, 68 years. But when I come back to thinking about the bigger picture, I want to go back and be amazed. I want to be amazed that, yes, I am a human being before I'm all the other things. And it's an important place when we think of the love we have for our parents, our grandparents, our children, our grandchildren, our greats, our siblings, extended families beyond numbers. Can we have that here? Most of it's nurturing ourselves so I can accept you. Accepting myself so that I can accept you. Being able to see you beyond myself so I could accept you. So I can see beyond my growth so I can accept you. But it's a lot of work from here, not out there. The growth of love, of time immemorial in who we are, not something that's put to us. How are going to have a good, good day? <laughs>